Greetings everybody and welcome back to the UPK developer. In our previous chapter we described how to create an outline and how to record a UPK topic. And in this chapter I will explain you how you can use the UPK topic uh, editor um, to uh, change or adjust your topics. What you can do is you can double click in the outline on a topic that you have created. And in this case you see our hello world topic coming up. Um, which consists of four parts. Um, your main screen on which you have your recorded, uh, your recorded screen. Your configuration buttons, just the standard ones. Your frame properties and your frame structure. Um, the UPK topic editor isn't that hard to use. As you can see each um, uh, frame that you recorded is visible and clickable. And as you click it, you can see that the screen adjusts and that your frame properties adjust. I will just explain you in simple steps what you can do and how you can adjust these screens to make them your own. So starting with the start screen, as you can see, the UPK makes um, a start screen, which is just a gray screen with a balloon saying hello world topic, press enter to start. In your frame properties on the right, you can actually adjust these texts and um, edit them or even put extra text in there. Uh, for example, um, welcome to the UPK. Uh, this is your starting screen. And as you can see, uh, the bubble adjusts with the text and you can just um, use these texts to adjust them to your own uh, taste. Uh, the frame pro properties consist of a lot of things. As you can see, there's a lot of icons here. In this case, these are the, um, the, the, the multiple topics in which you can see them, uh, the player mode. So in this case, you can see this uh, screen in the see it, in the do it, the player, and in the print it. Um, and you can see that it will be used in the see it and try it modes for this frame. In this case, it's not being used in the know it mode because, of course, that's the test. Um, the rest of the things are just gray for the starting screen. The only thing you can actually choose is how long do you want to uh, delay the time to be shown for this. And I think five seconds is a little bit too long, so we will, we will adjust it to three seconds. If we, for example, actually take a real frame structure, you can see that all the... Um, the items on the right side in the frame properties are actually usable this time. You can see the action that we recorded, double click the Mozilla Firefox list item. Um, if you uh, want to adjust this by um, making a, re let's say for example you, you misclicked and the icon is on the wrong place, you can just drag and drop this item to where you actually want it, maybe even make it a little bit big, bigger if you want to. Um, you can say what they have to do to actually do it. So we could say you have to either left click drag, right button up, right click. But in this case it was the left, left click. Um, well, what do you want the object name to be called? Well, in this case it was the Mozilla Firefox. As you can see at the left, um, if you select an object name, the object name uh, appears in the balloon. Uh, what kind of text was this? It was a, well in this case it was of course a list box item, but let's just change it to an outline. As you can see the text just automatically adjusts. This is all done with templates in the back. So we will put it back on what it was. It was a list box item. The delay time we want it to be displayed for 3 seconds until it goes for the next frame. Um, as you can see, the action area is on in this case. If we click it, we can turn it off or on. Um, you can keep this action with the next action in, you, in the do it or the ignore context. In this case, you will not use these items a lot. Uh, you might want to add a different uh, structure if in case you deleted this item, you can just add a new one. Um, but the above ones are the more important ones. Let's say you want to change the icon. For example, you want to display that this is a, um, an information frame. You can just add an icon in front of it. You can choose where you want to pointer of the button, let's say for the right. So you want it over here. You can actually drag this one too. 
you want uh, um, the text as an insert here in your text uh, and you can use templates or change the background color of the text box. Well, these are kind of simple things and not really exciting, but uh, they might come in handy when you actually are trying to uh, edit a topic uh, for a customer and you really want to give it the branding um, that the customer requires or uh, you would just want to make it more clear to the end user. Of course, it's kind of obvious if it says click the Mozilla Firefox list item that the end user knows what to do. But if you're um, trying to explain something more difficult, like actually an item or an action inside of a uh, software program, you can, of course, uh, add extra information um, to uh, alert the person what they have to do and to tell them how they uh, should do it. Um, what you can also do is make a jump in point. If you put a label in here for a jump in point, it will mean that when you actually um, publish this uh, topic, uh, the topic will consist of two uh, jumping points, uh, the start or where you selected the jumping point. So let's say if you have a frame structure consisting of more than 20 frames and you do not want the user to be always starting at the start uh, frame but you want him to jump in in the middle of a topic when it's needed, you can just add a jumping point at the 10th frame uh, so he will not have to do the complete uh, uh, topic is he, if he just wants uh, a little part of it. So let's see, did we skip anything? Not on the properties, I guess. Um, the, next things I the next thing I want to show you is the sound editor. It's underneath the frame structure. If you, for example, uh, want to um, add uh, sounds to your topics, um, a voice displays, you can uh, edit them here. You can record sounds when you're actually recording a UPK topic or you can just record them afterwards. Uh, mostly it's done during the recording, but if you um, want to split those two actions, you can actually do that too. So let's go back to our frame properties. As you can see, uh, the, the simple menu bars above here with most things clearly like file, save, edit, um, the, the views that you want to see. Uh, but the important uh, bar is the bar underneath it. It's the uh, bar for the frames. Let's say, for example, that between this frame and this frame, you're actually missing a frame and you want to insert a new one. You can use this bar by saying the insert and then insert missing frames or insert an explanation frame, insert an alternative path, a decision frame. Um, with these kind of uh, frames you can adjust the movie into uh, different types of movies. Let's say for example in uh, a software program uh, there's a decision point where you can either go left or right. You can use a decision frame and depending on the choice that the person makes in the UPK um, the topic will continue uh, along that point. So for example I'll show you. As you can see there's a decision frame in here now and we could split it into two lines, continuing with this line or a line underneath it if we want to. Let's say we're missing a frame, we can enter the missing frame. As you can see, the recorder opens with another screen. I could make a screen and press finish and then in the topic. And then in the topic, this extra screen will appear. Of course, there's also a delete. You can delete decision frames or you can select multiple frames by using the control button. As you can see, the green ones are selected now. And you can say, I want to delete this whole pad or I want to delete multiple frames. You can recapture in case you um, uh, deleted something that you do not want to delete or copy a frame and edit it if you want to duplicate it. One of the easiest things that's inside of the UPK is the fact that if you decided to make a screenshot and for example the screenshot changes, let's say for example in this Google screenshot the Google logo changes and you want to adjust that logo, uh, there is an uh, option called the edit screenshot. If you click it, uh, the selected screenshot will open in paint and you could actually just select in here delete the logo and maybe add a, a new logo 
for example, I'll just do it in text now. You save it, and after you close the paint, the UPK topic is um, changed with the new logo. So you can actually change uh, screenshots inside of the UPK. Um, the last thing I would like to show you for this uh, editor is that the icons over here are uh, very plain, but they are simple to forget. When you're creating a UPK outline, you really have to think about your content groups. Do I want them to see this screenshot in know it mode? Do I want them to see it in do it mode? Um, especially for explanation frames, uh, if you insert them into a topic, um, you can have a lot of action frames and uh, a lot of uh, explanation frames after it. For the do it mode, as you know, you can do it in a live application and the UPK will just shrink into the right side of your screen and you can use it by uh, scrolling through the different screenshots to actually see it. Uh, if you use those explanation frames inside of the do it mode, it will also mean that those people have to see the explanation frames inside of that do it mode. And for some um, projects it's easy, but for some projects it's also very annoying. Um, so when creating an outline, please be sure that you uh, know in which modes you want to use the screen and adjust them according to uh, the client uh, wishes, of course. So that's it for about the topic editor. In the next one, we will actually try to use a topic editor um, by adding a concept and an introduction screen. So thank you for your attention.